Hey there, YouTube. Clay Hughes. Get uh, my 1949 Emerson Electric Company uh, antique desk fan we're going to be working on today. Uh, this is part two of our video, uh, video series actually, that's going to um, cover, you know, the restoration of this thing. So I'm kind of excited about it. Um, I'll show you again uh, the fan running. fairly smooth no issues everything is um, uh, you know in, in decent shape except for you know cosmetically um, you know we get a lot of rust here some dents and, um, a lot of corrosion on the on the cage itself and the fan blades you know could really use a good uh, good cleaning but the fan works so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to give it a good cleaning and uh, hopefully that's all she really needs um, so uh, before we get started, of course, obviously, you know, safety first. Uh, we're going to unplug this thing before we start working on it. Um, this is my first time uh, taking apart uh, an antique desk fan, um, which is one of the reasons for making this video is to help and show others who don't know what they're doing. Um, so I'm not sure where to begin. I think I'm going to start with the um, with the cage and the blades so I can kind of make a little you know more user friendly sized package um, let's see I don't know if I can see that um, I mean just just the corrosion alone on uh, these eight cord knots is kind of crazy it's coming off very easily though it's just a 5 16 nut driver and no resistance whatsoever so that's good it's a good sign I have not um, pre-oiled anything on this fan I thought about it and forgot and so of course it never happened and um, then it was time to just go ahead and start the video Does this come off of here? I guess you just sort of. Okay, there we go. All right. Yeah, this cage is going to need a lot of work. Let's see if we can uh, get some close, close ups here. Yeah, this. Um, this gauge is going to need a lot of work. There's some dents and some of the, some of these wires need to be straightened out and fixed where it was dropped or knocked over or something. But yeah, we'll 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 get it there. So we'll set this off to the side for now. And we have just a just a flathead, tiny flathead on the top of this. just a set screw I think hmm. wonder if this is like a force fit or something Kind of hesitant to pull too hard on it just in case that's not how that's supposed to come off but I mean it's pretty apparent with having a set screw in there that that should come off like that so you can feel it I think this is the whole shaft moving though that's not the actual fan um, blade itself Yeah, there she's going. A little gentle 
pry with a big flathead seems to be doing the trick. Well, or not, I think it may have just pulled. I put a little bit of um, penetrant, penetrating oil um, down into that area. Uh, it does seem to be kind of a pressed, pressed on fit. And as I'm pulling though, um, it feels like I'm pulling against the motor and things that I don't know for sure that I want to pull against. So, oh yeah, there, that, that came off real well that time. So uh, I definitely recommend just, just put a little bit of uh, penetrating oil in there. Um, that way you're not having to tug on the motor quite so, uh, so heavily. So this fan, it's kind of interesting. I thought that was maybe a bearing or something, but it's not. Let me see if I can show you here. It's got kind of, um, well, it's like a cup, but they're, at least on this blade, it's, uh, it all seems to be one piece. And there's the, uh, I apologize, I'm trying to, trying to have a uh, good lighting here for you. It's just hard to, hard to see. There it is. All right. So there's the uh, set screw hole and, um, the, the weird cup thing that seems to be the same piece um, as the set screw. So I'm not really sure why they designed it that way, but um, you can see the front, how they put it together. So yeah, not too, not too complicated there. All right. And we have that off. Okay. We're going to flip this bad boy over and, uh, Go ahead and take the cord off next. So I could just have two screws here on the bottom. Flat heads. Very, very interesting. This thing, uh, this thing has the feel and um, weight of aluminum, but it's rusty like steel. I guess it's just a, I don't know, it's tin maybe. Oh. Hang on. It is in fact steel. kind of odd how it's uh, really rusty on the bottom and almost looks like clean aluminum on the inside uh, it's interesting all right <clears throat> moving on uh, let's see here this cord um, looks quite simple to uh, remove they've just used a couple of uh, wire nuts here Going to the head wire. I'm not going to save that at all. Oh yeah, this um, oh yeah, this wire is uh, not too bad, but it's seen better days. All right, now we're going to remove this piece. Oh, that connection looks a lot better. Go ahead and pull this thing out. I think they call this a, uh, what is it, a lineman's? Lineman's knot? I think it's what they call that. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. All right. Let's remove that cord out of the way. There's uh, this rubber grommet that's... Uh, Oh yeah, that's just disintegrating. I can just peel off chunks of it. So we definitely need to plan to add another uh, grommet to this thing. Um, this head wire... Um, 
this head wire is going to have to get re-soldered to this switch. I'm going to I'm going to keep this switch. It looks like it could could possibly be original. Um, let's see here. Get a close up of that. There we go. Yeah, I really like the way that this switch is set up. It's um, just simple and functional. It may have been replaced. I don't know, but um, I think I'm going to keep it. I'm just going to I'll desolder those connections, and then we'll get rid of this, and then we'll go ahead and take this apart. All right. Since I plan to replace the head wire anyway. Then I'm going to cut this off, but I'm going to cut it right here at the switch. Just that way, if something changes. Oh man, this wire just, uh, look at that. That wire just broke apart right there in my hands. So this head wire definitely needs to be replaced. You can, I don't know if you can see on the camera or not, just all the little brittle flakes of stuff that are falling off of this. It's unreal. Um, yeah, this wire was probably not that safe. It's, uh, it's crumbling and falling apart. And uh, the insulation is frayed. There's two bare wires right there just waiting to make contact with each other so we will not be reusing that I'm go ahead and, well yeah, that part will be okay all right well let's separate the motor from the base which looks simple enough wing nut Looks like we have a shim in here of some sort. Not sure what that's for. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure what that's for. But there's a shim piece in there. Um, see, it's on the off switch side. So, hmm. I don't know what that's for. All right. Well, we just need to remember where it goes, and then we'll put it back later. How about that? All right. Now, we get to the motor. This is the part that I really have absolutely no idea uh, at all what I'm doing. So... Um, so let's set this off to the side first, and then, um, you know, it's other than the paint kind of flaking off, it's in really good shape. I, I wish I could, uh, I think it, we could probably salvage this finish. I mean, it's real pretty. Um, and in some places, I think it, it just has a. It has a, a it has a lot starting to come off right along these this edge here. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, I think I'll still probably still probably sand it and do all the painting for that. Uh, make it look as absolutely you know clean as I can. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take this switch out just for the sake of uh, when I go to sand on this thing and um, clean it or use any kind of you know, chemicals or anything, then I want to keep the switch out of the way. I'm also going to I'll desolder it while it's outside of the um, base here, just to make it a little bit easier on myself. 
I'm really um, excited that this switch has a marking on it that says made in USA. You don't see that with electrical switches anymore. I don't know when the last time I saw a switch made in the US was. Everything, even you know, home switches and everything else, you know, it, it may not be uh, China, but it, you know, Mexico and everywhere else. Look at this switch. Let's see, can, I, can you see that? It's not focusing. Um, Okay, there we go. Yeah, look at that switch. It's it's literally just a contact that's just fully exposed. It's underwriters laboratory inspected though. It's a three amp switch. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, there you can see you can see the action of it. And that's something. All right. Cool. What a mess we're making. I put this white paper down here so you guys could uh, could see the fan components a lot easier. And uh, yeah, just making a mess. Hands and everything. But yeah. Um, and then here's the uh, here's the rubber grommet that's just crumbling. It's just it's just falling to pieces. So we will not be reusing that. Okay, now here's the fun part. Uh, the part that I have absolutely no idea where to even start on this. So, we're just going to wing it. That's what, uh, that's what I'm good at. But I see a flathead screw and something connected to something else that I think is going to be in my way. So that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty easy choice. All right. There's our adjustable oscillating. Uh, wow, that's really cool. Let's see here. Check out how this oscillator works. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there it is. That's pretty cool. They don't they don't engineer stuff like that anymore. All right. <clears throat> so there's our oscillator. This just uh, this just obviously pivots on that point. There's a screw here on the back. Yeah, I already feel the housing coming off. Okay. There we are. Easy peasy. Yeah, this definitely needs uh, probably the most TLC cosmetically out of out of the whole thing. And um, see here, this camera just doesn't want to autofocus. Um, yeah, so this definitely needs the most the most TLC, and uh, it's gonna get it. So we're gonna. Uh, we're on that next. Wow. Look at how clean these windings are. On the inside. It's like this fan has never been used. It's just dirty and neglected. Wow, I was not expecting that. You can see where all the dust and gunk and everything made its way in right there but 
where the cover and everything else was that's real pretty I'm I'm excited to see that in there no wonder it ran so well all right now this part of the motor I'm kind of clueless let's see here we have all right we have another uh, lineman's knot that was for underneath this cover um, hmm. ah this comes off nice okay so we'll clean that up put it back with some grease Looks like we have some shims in here. It's like three different shims with that are two different sizes. Not sure what the significance of uh, that is. Okay, let's go there. I think this must be where the oil probably went. There's a, just a brass plug here on the bottom. And it's uh, pretty oily and greasy looking on the inside, but. Hmm. And here's another one on the back. And this is on the bottom of the motor as it would be um, standing upright, of course. Okay, I think that these are what's holding this thing together. These are none of none of these are tight. Um, really, so far, nothing on here has been a challenge to get off except for the fan was you know, just a little bit of a force fit onto there but that was it <clears throat> there are three screws here on the top well this is technically the back but there are three screws here on the back of the motor holding this oscillating piece to the frame I guess I don't know like I said I'm weighing it there we go ooh ah okay there's a gear in there I see okay so as see this this is connected to the shaft of the fan I gotta focus here come on so this is connected to the shaft of the blade and this screw spins inside here which is what causes this it's it's spinning right in there I don't know if you can see they're off to the to the left or not but uh, but that's what causes this to oscillate very clever Wow, this gear has absolutely no wear or damage or anything like that. And leave, we're gonna—I think we're gonna leave this original. I'm just gonna uh, just gonna use a lot of Q-tips and clean it out, and then put some uh, some new grease on it, 
and we're going to leave that just the way it is. That thing doesn't even need paint. Okay, I want to go ahead and clean off <clears throat> some of this uh, old grease first. This stuff is uh, definitely not providing the protection that it once did. But this is, you can tell it's a very like, um, I don't know, not quite, co not quite like cosmoline, but um, it's very old fashioned grease, that's for sure. If there's such a thing as old fashioned grease. Still can't figure out how to get this off though. I'm not sure what is keeping this on here. If it's just a really tight press fit or if it's um, got a screw somehow from the back side maybe. I don't see anything from back here though. All right, so I figured out how to get this off. I just use this this little soft uh, plastic, you know, dead blow, and uh, just kind of tapped it around the edge. Uh, it is a press fit, and they give you a little notch here on the on the uh, very bottom uh, to to pry against it, which is which is what I was thinking originally, but it just didn't want to budge. Um, it just did take a little bit more um, oomph than than I was thinking. Um, so we'll get this thing off of here. I want to be gentle because I don't really want to. Um, I'm not going to paint this housing. I, I I think this finish is just perfect. Um, I'm going to try to match everything as best I can with um, the uh, Rust-Oleum black appliance enamel. Um, so I think we should be okay. Um, but uh, I'm going to keep couple of these pieces uh, are going to retain the original finish and then um, hopefully they'll just match as closely as possible. Um, there we are. All right. So there's our, there's our front cover. It's pretty grungy. Um, this is going to need some paint. Um, oh, hey, there was a shim right there. Um, remember where all this stuff goes <laughs> all right so there's that piece all right it appears the only thing keeping this whole assembly from sliding out is right here in the back where that uh, that worm gear uh, for the uh, oscillating part was so there is a uh, cotter pin right there that we'll need to remove and get my smaller pair I have more cotter pins so we won't we won't plan on reusing this one that won't be plan a anyway it looks like they they put a lot of effort into making this just as utterly small as they could um, so I don't know we may, we may actually go ahead and reuse that one we'll see there we go that's come off now okay, I'm going to very carefully pull that out Well, that's in really good shape. All right. We're going to give this a good cleaning. Give that a good cleaning. We'll be ready to move on with that one. Okay, so I think I figured out how these uh, this whole inside portion comes out. Um, unfortunately I can't quite get it out just yet but um, these studs go all the way through and then you can see the back side where it's uh, where it's tapped and drilled out um, 
So I don't know if you can, you won't, probably won't be able to make it out in there, but but there is, um, let me get it to focus. There is the stud going all the way through. So we just got to figure out how to, uh, how to how to remove that. I used a uh, two nuts, kind of did like a jam nut thing, and a uh, small pair of vice grips, and I'm kind of boogering up this one, and then the jam nuts just weren't working. It's very it's very small um, bolt. So so I took a, a little break. I actually the camera ran out yesterday, and it, it was a quitting time anyway. Um, but uh, I was having problems getting these studs out, and um, you know, as we figured out, they go all the way through, and uh, you can see I changed my camera here too. Yeah, you can see where they go through on uh, on this other side. So um, the the nuts that came on it, they're they're too small. I couldn't get a good jam nut um, going, and I couldn't back it off. But I just got two um, two nylon uh, nuts. Put on there and it's backing out of course it also helps that I put uh, penetrating oil on it overnight as well so there we have it Let's see if I can get a let me get a close-up of this bad boy okay let's get a close-up of this if it'll work come on come on There we go so you guys can see what that part looks like okay now we're just gonna do that three more times and we'll get this thing pulled out Yeah, you can see how short the threads are on the uh, on the bottom side, so they're really not held on by a whole lot. Now let's see if we can very carefully um, get this thing out. So what I did was I I gently. Uh, tapped out on on the solid part not on the windings um, but I gently tapped on on the four you know sides that are exposed and I've gotten it almost flush here on the face um, I ran out of room on here I was using this like a like a little cup to hold it in and uh, hitting it you know, upside down that way but uh, I've run out of space now so I kind of took an old 2 by 4 and made myself a, a little stand, I guess. And uh, I don't know. I'm going to see if this works. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever taken one of these motors apart. So I'm sure this is not the right way to do it. Um, but I figure as long as you're gentle with it I don't, and you're not beating on the windings, then it seems like a good idea at the time, right? really almost ready to come out I think it's just barely hanging on See how it's coming out it's getting there oh you know what I might be able to just give it a little wiggle I felt a little movement right there maybe there we go there we go okay all right we now have a stator out of the housing a frame whatever you want to call it and then
there's the motor so we're just going to uh, get this removed and uh, you know we'll solder the new connections right there uh, we'll do that in the next video uh, we'll get rid of this old wire and um, start the rebuilding process so I think there we have it there is our let's see here yep there's our full uh, disassembly uh, of this fan or at least as far as I'm gonna you know disassemble it there might be a few little small pieces that could be taken apart but uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that um, this I'm gonna leave the original black I mean that is that is in beautiful condition um, so that's just gonna get a real good uh, degreasing cleaning um, new wick I got the old wick out here um, that is just terrible and disgusting and falling apart so that wick is getting uh, replaced but uh, the paint on that is gonna is gonna stay the way it is uh, this rotor will get a good cleaning um, this will get uh, good sanding painting um, same with the blades uh, same with this front cover same with the cage um, really this this housing is the only piece I, I think I'm gonna end up not painting um, so that'll but that will be original um, which will be exciting to me so that's it folks um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up now for our uh, part two and we'll see in part three where we we do all the cleanup and put it all back together and show off the final product thanks for watching